Dine with other English. Dine with a Hawitat, Harit. It is my pleasure that you dine with me in Wadiram! Is it just me, or is that cut all kinds of awesome? Our subject today is that of scene transitions, but I'm not really interested in wipes, fades, or dissolves. If the purpose of a transition is to simply take the story from one place to the next, then the transition itself should be short, simple, and to the point. However, that doesn't mean that it can't be creative or interesting or that you have to use whatever presets there are in Premiere. You're very angry, aren't you? No, Alec. Not angry. Just disappointed. And that's why we're going to look at the films of Sir David Lean, whose transitions are the stuff of legends. Later for going. I want to avoid Kropotkin Street. The first thing to notice is that Lean actually limits the amount of times he cuts on music. These are fairly obvious cuts that we're all familiar with and conscious of, and they can and do work well, but if every scene is starting with a musical cue, that can get really repetitive and boring fast. What Lean mostly cuts with instead are sound effects. They will be lucky for you. Allah favors the compassionate. There's a real simplicity to this kind of cut. It's clean and precise, but most importantly, it can be well hidden. Bit of luck about that cherry tree, isn't it? See, his films are littered with cuts like these, but to be honest, I wasn't aware of any of them until I started looking. And I think that's exactly what Lean wants. More often than not, he doesn't want you to be conscious of the cut. What he wants is for the scenes to flow as well and as smoothly as possible, and sound often affords that opportunity. One of the great things about this kind of cut is that you can do it with literally anything. Which Something tiny and almost unnoticeable. The government of this country. Or something gargantuan. Well, here we are. <laughs> Two that nearly always work well are nature or a line of dialogue. We had to do something to stop it. Something, anything. It didn't matter what. He had to. Had to. Aren't you losing your head, Mrs. Justin? Oh, and here's a useful trick. When you're cutting two shots together and the first ends on a line of dialogue, try pulling the second shot back further than you normally would, to where you're almost cutting off the last word of what's being said. If we ride west, we must strike the canal. Due west. So if that's what cutting with just one sound looks like, what does it look like cutting with two? One option is to bring music back into the mix as another layer backing up the sound. Or even cutting hard from one to the other. Oh. Lean has a lot of cuts like this in his earlier films, but the more he directed, the less he did it, ultimately exchanging cutting sound with music for cutting multiple sounds together. This is a much harder cut to get just right because any two sounds may just not mix well together. But when they do work, they're genius. It's just that extra little boost propelling the audience into the next scene with complete ease. And the more similar the two sounds are to one another, the better. If you've ever edited though, you know that sometimes you don't actually want a particular cut to be smooth, but instead jarring. Lean has an answer for that one too. Build up whatever sound you have in a shot, and then drop everything on the cut. Or do the opposite. But what about transitions that are far more visual in nature? I guarantee you that the instant you saw the words David Lean and transition in the title, you immediately thought of this match cut right here, which just so happens to be the greatest cut of all time, and ironically came about purely by accident. Oh, and just because, here's its inverse. This is where things get really fun. 
Cuts like these aren't just effective, they're dynamic and, well, cool. Here's one I think works really well. I want some more. What? 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 Ask for more? But as creative and fun as these cuts can be, they walk a very fine line between the efficient and the gimmicky. For instance... Merry Christmas, Miss Lara! Oh, thank you, and Merry Christmas to you. I don't know about you, but that's just a bit too on the nose for me. But finding that balance was something that Lean and his editors often succeeded at, and I want to focus in on one particular cut he employed in his last few features. Gotta get a shot of this! It's something Kristen Thompson called a graphic echo, a time-compressing cut usually done in three shots. Um, Watch closely. Can you read? The Chicago Curry is my own. Pretty stinking cool, right? You've probably seen it done in other places, and it's possible that Lean was inspired by this four-shot version of it here done by Pal and Pressburger. Lean's own version of it is actually incredibly simple. In the first shot, the character draws attention to an object, either on screen or off. Second is a close-up of the object in question, and then the third echoes the first, usually with the different character or similar setup. I understood so from your letter, Mr. Bentley. Where you can get fun are in the variations you can take on that basic principle, like if you want to do the transition with just one character. Or if you're really ballsy, you can try it in just two shots instead of three. One thing to note, though, is that sound is consistent across every shot in the transition, further disguising the changeover. Again, Lean doesn't want you to be thinking about the cut in the moment. That's the entire point. Good night, dear. He once said that dialogue was boring, because when you looked back on any given film, you didn't remember the lines. You remembered the pictures. There have been plenty of times I've watched moments like these and liked something about the craft behind it, but haven't been able to put my finger on what exactly it is that I liked. But if it's true that we remember the pictures, then I think we can remember the cuts just as well. After all, that's where the real magic lies. But it appears on the screen as if it is one shot. It isn't. It's about six shots cut very fast, one after the other and sound effects binding them all up. And if you know your stuff about cutting, it really does look like one shot. You don't say, oh, there's the man watching, there's the man on the cyclist, there's that, at speed. It looks like one continuous piece of action. The number of times I've come out of the cinema where there's been a rather well-cut sequence, and I've heard people say that was very good photography. It's to hell with the photographer, it's the cutter. 